the general sense is that the meeting is going to be pretty rough. So the first half of 2022, as uh, you probably all know from the news, was really rough with lots of weather extremes. We've seen um, heat waves and flooding events in countries all around the world. The last few months were marked by a big geopolitical crisis as Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. And as the UN Secretary General um, recently said, this had a lot of uh, rippling effects. So the combination of increased climate impacts and the very tense geopolitical context really uh, don't make the climate negotiations any easier. One of the key issues, if not the key issue to look out for at COP27 is loss and damage and specifically finance for loss and damage. Loss and damage actually refers to climate change impacts that go beyond what communities can adapt to. And so the issue of finance for loss and damage refers to the provision of financial support for developing countries to tackle these climate change impacts such as um, sea level rise, for example. So our first question looking at COP27 will be whether the issue of finance for loss and damage even makes it onto the agenda. Because looking back at um, the Bonn conference, which took place in June, um, this issue actually didn't make it onto the formal negotiations agenda. It was discussed at the meeting, but only in the context of a dialogue. There was a proposal by uh, the like-minded developing countries group to actually have the a dialogue on loss and damage finance tied back into the negotiations, but uh, that led to a big agenda fight on the first conference day and ultimately it didn't make it there. Recently there's been uh, discussions at the level of heads of um, delegation and things are looking rather promising for the issue to be actually discussed at COP27. There's a lingering issue of the 100 billion US dollar per year finance goal, which is key actually for developing countries to build or maintain or maybe regain trust in the process. Uh, developed countries were supposed to provide developing countries uh, with 100 billion US dollars in uh, climate finance um, per year by 2020. And so far they've uh, failed to reach that goal. So now we're waiting on a new report by the Standing Committee on Finance to see what the status on this delivery is. And this will actually be really important uh, because right now the climate negotiators are in the process of defining a new finance goal um, that is supposed to start in 2025. All right, and this was finance, just finance, and even just a part of finance. And there's so much more on the agenda of this next meeting. We have another big topic coming up and that's mitigation. So the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. COP26 actually called upon parties to revisit and strengthen their 2030 targets by the end of 2022, because we have seen in various uh, reports that with current targets, we are actually not on track to meet the objectives of the Paris Agreement. And also delegates in Egypt are supposed to iron out the details of a work program on urgently scaling up mitigation ambition and implementation. And what shape this will take is actually really uncertain because in, in Bonn, the negotiations on this issue were really contentious, so contentious even that delegates could actually not agree on taking note of the informal note of discussions held at the meeting. So many are afraid that the discussions in Egypt will actually start from scratch again. Delegates are also expected to make progress with regards to considering the global goal on adaptation, this is also a big year for the global stock take, uh, which is for people who don't know the process uh, for at regular intervals taking stock of progress in implementing in the Paris Agreement. A final big issue to look out for is that of logistics. How are visas going to get approved? Are they going to be approved on time? What about the cost of accommodation? We've been hearing about soaring hotel prices. And overall, um, how is civil society participation going to be ensured? We've had lots of discussions about this um, in, in Bonn, really looking at the structure of the intergovernmental process and how to enhance civil society participation in the climate change meetings.